Hello and welcome. This is Amara Media Corporation English Service and you're watching our weekly edition Apps of the Week. First, Grand Stories. Ethiopian Christmas has been colorfully celebrated in Lalibola town on the presence of local and international tourists, pilgrims, officials and ambassadors of different countries. Take a look at it. The Ethiopian Christmas, also called Genna, is celebrated annually on 7th January at the commemoration of Jesus Christ's birthday. It is colorfully celebrated by Christians all over the country. <laughs> the celebration is held in a uniquely mesmerizing mood of festivity by followers of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahadu Church at one of the world's heritage sites, the Lalibala Rock Hill Churches in the Amhara region. This year, millions of people have flooded to this religious and historical site inscribed on the representative list of the world's heritages of humanity. Ethiopians, the Ethiopian diaspora, diplomats based in Ethiopia, and foreign tourists have taken part in this uniquely fascinating event. Andrea Landeta from Brazil has been one of the foreign tourists. It is for the first time that she has attended the Christmas holiday in Lalibala. She's told Amara Media Corporation what she's felt being part of the Christmas holiday there. Incredible. It's such a beautiful place. Um, well, it's pure magic. The energy here, the people, the, the whole celebration has been wonderful. A very unique experience. What did you like the most from the celebration of Christmas? Well, I would say that it's just incredible to see so many people gather together um, to celebrate in such a peaceful way um, the energy of the people. Uh, you can feel it as soon as you come in. But also, of course, the chantings of the priests, um, all the priests that said their prayers. It just... It's a, it was a very special mo moment to be here, yes. Andrea said that she has never experienced anything like this elsewhere in the world. So have you ever experienced this kind of thing in the whole world? No, I have never seen anything like this before, really. And this is why I think uh, La Libela is such a unique place, but also Ethiopia is just a gem, a gem of a country to, still to be discovered. Religious fathers on the occasion have extended their best wishes to the faithful and urged all to play their parts for the permanence of the peace agreement signed between the federal government and TPLF. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has also extended his best wishing messages, stressing that Ethiopians would be beneficial if they are able to draw lessons from the story of Jesus Christ. Some European countries such as Russia, Ukraine, Serbia and Belarus and neighboring Egypt celebrate Christmas on the same day as Ethiopians do, on 7th January, while most of the world that follows the Gregorian calendar holds it on the 5th of December. <laughs> Ethiopian diplomats have called on the diaspora community to visit Ethiopia and enjoy the spectacular upcoming events with the beautiful weather in the country. Abu Burhani has more. Ethiopia's ambassador to the U.S., Seleshi Bekele, Ethiopia's ambassador to Canada, Fitzumara Gaind, Ethiopia's ambassador to the U.K., Teferi Melese, told Ethiopian news agency on Saturday that they are enjoying the Ethiopian Christmas Eve in Ethiopia. Diplomats representing Ethiopia across the globe have been attending the annual evaluation meeting in the African Leadership Excellence Academy. Ambassador Seleshi Bekele said the Ethiopian diaspora would have a lot of fun in Ethiopia and the climate is wonderful, unlike in the countries they live in this season. There are also very important spectacular places where you can go, like uh, Gondor Sport, uh, Sport at the Sababa, Janmeda Sport, and uh, in many churches and monasteries you can see this event highly celebrated. So I, I encourage uh, all Ethiopian diaspora to come with their families and uh, really celebrate this, as well also foreigners, expatriates, they can enjoy this. Ambassador Seleshi urged not only the Ethiopian diaspora to come with their families and celebrate the events, but also foreigners. 
Ethiopia's ambassador to Canada, Fusumaraga, said on his part that Christmas celebration and the other upcoming events in Ethiopia during this season are distinct. We encourage visitors, Ethiopians in the diaspora and you know friends of Ethiopia, anybody who wish to visit Ethiopia, we encourage you to come to Ethiopia. We have a beautiful weather at this time in January. He stated that in Ethiopia, people don't need a heater or cooler anytime. With annual condition and the welcoming Ethiopian people celebrating both Ethiopian Christmas and the special Epiphany program within two weeks is thrilling. Ambassador Fitzum noted that there are also new tourist destinations built over the past two years in the country. Therefore, this encourages the diaspora to come to Ethiopia, enjoy the weather and the hospitality of the people. Ethiopia's ambassador to the UK, Tafari Mellesa, said on his part that he would like to invite the Ethiopian diaspora to come and enjoy their culture, story, people and their families. The headquarters of the Africa Center for Disease Control and Prevention inaugurated in the presence of Chinese Foreign Minister King Gang and Chairperson of the African Union Commission, Musa Faki Mamet Abdelbrahani. The inauguration ceremony, also attended by Chang Chun, ambassador and head of mission of China to the African Union, ambassadors from EU member states to Ethiopia, and representatives from Chinese companies in Ethiopia, with a gross floor area of 23,570 meters square, the project consists of administrative offices, emergency response center, information center, and biological laboratories. Once completed, it will be the first Pan-African Center for Disease Control and Prevention on the African continent, fully equipped with modern administrative, experimental and other supporting facilities. Africa will then be able to enhance its disease prevention and monitoring competence, respond faster to epidemic emergencies and fortify its public health system and capacity, delivering tangible benefits to the African people. The multi-building facility is constructed by Chinese construction giant China Civil Engineering Construction Cooperation. Erwood indicated that the project will be another milestone embodying the China-Africa partnership. Erwood indicated this state-of-the-art facility will deepen the momentum in Africa's quest toward realizing a proactive disease prevention scheme. It is to be recalled that the construction work of the Africa CDC headquarters started in December 2020. When fully completed, the building will include an emergency operation center, a data center, a laboratory, a resource center, briefing rooms, a training center, a conference center, offices and expatriate apartments, all to be constructed, finished and equipped by the government of China. Africa CDC is a specialized technical institution of the African Union established to support public health initiatives of member states and strengthen the capacity of their public health institutions to detect, prevent, control and respond quickly and effectively to disease threats. Northern California Ethiopian community and medical care professionals have donated 27 million worth of medical supplies to all affected areas. Abdel Brahani has more. Minister of Health Liata Dessa received the donation from the representative of Northern California Health Professionals and members of the Ethiopian community, Dr. Kedis Kidani. Speaking at the handing over ceremony, Dr. Kedis said multiple health centers were destroyed due to conflicts. Yeah, North California, yet in Abalemoyach. Uh, Our team has worked very hard to raise the funds to accomplish this promised task. We collaborated with MedShare, a non-profit U.S.-based organization that collects and donates medical equipment and supplies worldwide to sponsor and donate medical supplies and equipment, transported into 40 feet ocean containers worth to 27 million per. Health Minister Liata Dessa on her part commended the donation and called on all Ethiopians at home and abroad to support the efforts being carried out to restore the health centers in various ways. The minister noted that several health centers had been damaged due to the conflict in various regions of the country over the past few years.
Therefore, Liaster that various efforts have been made in collaboration with regional health bureau and pertinent bodies to restore the health centers so as to resume services. The medical equipment donated by the Ethiopian health care professionals and members of the Ethiopian community in Northern California will mainly be provided to four health centers located in Waghemra and Norzwolo. Adjunct professor at Georgetown University School of Continuing Education, Dr. Dorej Bafik Adu, said that compiling important information about the Great Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is crucial for strengthening diplomacy. Here is the detail. Dr. Dorej, who has recently published a book on the Nile geopolitics and the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, briefed about his work to Ethiopian diplomats attending training at the African Leadership Excellence Academy. In his presentation, Dr. Dorej said, knowing the history about the Abai River and documenting it with written information is important for diplomatic endeavors, adding that all the written material currently available regarding the river are published by other parties. Hence, he advised to have properly compiled information about the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam as it is crucial to carry out effective diplomatic activities and help the next generation grasp a comprehensive knowledge about the river. He also discussed about his book that depicts a broad range of topics related to the Abai River and the Nile Basin including the efforts made by Ethiopian leaders to utilize the river for development, the challenges they have faced, among other things. The scholar briefed the diplomats on the geopolitics of the Nile River from the past to the present, as well as on the GERD. According to him, GERD is an important phenomenon that Ethiopians have turned their regret on the Abai River into hopefulness. He stressed the need to inculcate a sentiment among all Ethiopians to be an ambassador of their country. Dr. Dereje called on the Ethiopian diaspora across the world to strengthen support to their country in their respective professional field. Foreign Affairs State Minister Ambassador Tayilma on his past said books like this one will be a great support for the nation's diplomatic activities. The book contains all the information about the Abai River, he said, adding that the next generation will have more comprehensive information regarding the issue. He noted this work is very promising in terms of providing resources in helping negotiations to defend the interests of Ethiopia. Senior researcher at Ethiopian Economics Association Araga Shumeti said that the effort being made by the government of Ethiopia to achieve higher production by producing crops in multiple seasons is remarkable. Brown Organa. In an exclusive interview with Ina, Araga Shumeti said, Agriculture is the mainstay of the overall economy. The researcher said over the past few years, the agriculture production has showed growth even in the desert areas due to application of technologies such as irrigation. The efforts expended by the government in using technologies and mechanization should be intensified, he said, adding that the government should also identify the types of the crops that are cultivated. In the previous two uh, to three years, the government uh, tried to have uh, an active intervention on the, on the agriculture, like trying to have uh, a multiple time, uh, time production within, within, within a physical year. Uh, for instance, the government had uh, uh, provide due attention for uh, irrigation uh, and at the same time provide uh, attention for uh, mechanizing the, the, the production system. Uh, having a focus on a few of uh, the crops, especially wheat. The researcher explained that this practice should be expanded to other crops in different parts of the country. The researcher said despite the country's big agricultural potential for commercial and export products, the level of production is far below from what is expected. Aranga said Ethiopia's agriculture is dominantly practiced by smallholder farmers who frequently use traditional production methods and largely dependent on nature. Therefore, the government should provide support to farmers to enhance productivity and free from total nature dependence. All the country as a whole has uh, potential of producing diversified products uh, because of the different agroecologies what the country has. Uh, so, the, if there is effort by the government, so we, we can or the country can produce 
huge amount of uh, surplus uh, or surplus products that may even feed uh, some part of Africa. The effort is being made by the government to mechanize and modernize agriculture through assisting smallholder farmers utilize mechanized farming has significant contribution for increasing the overall production. According to him, the government should try to identify the type of technology that could be introduced for wheat and barley producing areas, commercial crop producing areas and irrigation potential areas. He added that Ethiopia needs to plant its own chemical fertilizer and other essential agricultural inputs in order to avoid dependency on other countries. Ethiopia can learn experience from the Asian tigers, especially the Chinese and Korean experience, registering high productivity from smallholder farmers in fragmented and small plots of land, the senior researcher pointed out. Well, dear viewers, this is Amara Media Corporation English Service, and you have been watching our grand stories of the week. I'm Modumli.